What's up everyone? Thank you so very much for clicking on this video. My name is Lou and I love to talk about superpowers. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because it was actually voted on by you, the viewers. Almost in a landslide, you guys decided to have me discuss teleportation as a power. So, being a man of the people, I decided to you know, answer your prayers, whatever that means. So that's what we're going to be talking about. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the very interesting in regards to teleportation, as well as providing you with who I believe are the best and worst users and the overall scores in five different categories. So let's stop kicking the tires and let's dive right into it. So what is teleportation? Teleportation, simply put, is the ability that allows its user to move from one location to another without physically occupying that space or the space in between. It's a subpower of spatial manipulation. If you watch any movie or cartoon or read a comic book or anything like that, you've seen teleportation. It's, I would consider in the top 10, if not top five of all abilities. You have opening portals, you have apparition, or how do you pronounce it? It's the thing from Harry Potter. Uh, apparate, yeah, apparating. Uh, you have dematerializing yourself and appearing somewhere else. There's so many different ways to teleport and so many different types of teleportation. Teleportation, what sets it apart from like things like super speed or things like that is the different applications you can apply with teleportation. When you're teleporting, you can do different things, both offensively and defensively. Let's go with offense first. So the offensive uh, way you can teleport, you can teleport objects inside of your opponents or through your opponents. You can send your opposition away, maybe like far, far away distances or into space if you feel them deadly, particularly deadly. You can also send attacks or, you know, something of that sort back at your opponents or opposition, like I said before. You can teleport someone's head off. I know that sounds really messed up, but if you, seen portals used like they should be used especially in mcu which we're not getting into that but that's really dumb that they don't use portals the way they should especially with certain stop so move, move on the best thing to me about teleportation is the fact that it allows such freedom you can just go anywhere like at any time i can be in hawaii right now i could be in tokyo but the best thing about teleportation to me is the fact that you can go anywhere but in my research i actually found that's not always the case because like everything in life there are levels of teleportation with that we're going to break down the levels of teleportation you know skill wise or potency of power if that makes sense oh i like that potency of power starting us off we have basic level teleporters basic level teleporters they're not too special they can only go short distances think like inside outside like maybe 30 feet and they can't really teleport larger objects than they can carry or they're wearing Next up, you have your advanced users. Uh, so advanced users are, this is where it starts to get a little better. So you can actually move a few kilometers in distance, as well as teleport a couple people, maybe like three or three to like five, I believe. Not a whole lot of people, but you can teleport people with you. You can still teleport like smaller objects that you carry or you wear. So it's, it's still not crazy just yet, but you can definitely tell your skills growing the more you use it. After your advanced users come the professional users. Now it's, very fancy of a title. I like that professional user. With professional level teleporters, you have the ability to teleport up to 1,000 kilometers away in distance, as well as carry or teleport up to 20 people, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure, but up to 20 people. With this level of power or skill, you can teleport as many people as you want. You are essentially a Greyhound bus. It, well, probably a little bit better than a Greyhound bus, but you get what I'm talking about. Next up will be your expert level teleporters. Now, with the expert level, this is where you really start getting dumb powerful. Because from, you move from like maybe a thousand kilometers in distance to continental shifting. You can go from here to Asia, or here to Africa, or Africa to here, or wherever. You, you can teleport pretty much anywhere on the planet, as well as move things as large as vehicles. As far as I know, expert level teleporters, they can actually teleport a lot more people. It's not really stipulated how many, but I'm pretty sure if you can teleport, you know, 20 people a thousand kilometers, you can probably teleport like a thousand people to Australia. Next up will be the master level teleporters. Man, this is pretty cool. Master level teleportation allows you to teleport planetarily. So you go from continent to like moving off planet. This is where you're you're getting really stupid, like your power just growing out of control. Let's say you had you go from like 20 to like maybe 50 to 100 people, you can teleport them all off world, like at once. Think of that scene from GT where like SS4 Goku using instant transmission is teleporting like a bunch of people off like Earth because it's about to blow up. I hope that's not a spoiler. It shouldn't be, because that show's been over for like 
damn near like 30 years. Master level teleporters, you can just do stupid stuff, but it's not even just that. You can actually teleport entire buildings, different locations. So could you imagine, like imagine whatever the tallest building is, Becca have it up there somewhere. Imagine moving a building like this size to the moon or moving it to like the middle of nowhere. That's the level of power you have at Master. When you master teleportation and you become a master of teleportation, this is the kind of dumb stuff you can do. So you might be thinking, you can teleport off world, you can teleport buildings, you can teleport so much stuff at the master level, what's beyond that? Well, after the master level, you enter the ultimate level, which is kind of weird, but the ultimate level teleporters are just, they're, they're so frustrating. So ultimate level teleporters, you can teleport light years in distance. You can go from here to another galaxy if you wanted to. This is, the, this is the Dragon Ball Z level of teleportation. Stupid level of teleportation. Like, we're on Earth, let's move to Namek. Or we're here, go to Yartra. Or we're there, Yartra. Let's go to Frieza Planet 666 or whatever. That's the level of teleportation that you get at the ultimate level. So think of like Goku or Boo or whoever. It's beyond even that because the ultimate level of teleportation allows this user to do even some, something I've never even thought was like a thing, but I guess it is. You can actually teleport entire planets anywhere you want or teleport them with you. It's dangerous to do that, you could possibly do irreversible damage, but at this level of power, you can do that. You can move planets anywhere you want it to, well, anywhere within that light year. So how could you get crazier than that? Well, you do that by reaching the absolute level of teleportation. Absolute level of teleportation allows this user to teleport anywhere. And I'm not just saying that like hyperbolically or whatever, I'm saying like seriously, you can teleport anywhere. You can teleport into illusion. You can teleport into imagination. You can teleport into other galaxies or into other realities. You are the ultimate traveler. You can go anywhere. And it's not even just that. You can teleport away wounds and illnesses. If you were to shoot me and I had this level of proficiency with teleportation, I can teleport away the wound from my body. That doesn't even make sense. I mean, it's cool, don't get me wrong, it's really dope, but it's also so dumb. Just, just know, this is the peak of this ability. It doesn't go any crazier than this, but it doesn't have to because that's so dumb. Like, I, oh my God. Moving a long way from the absolute insanity of the levels of teleportation, let's talk about some of its limitations because despite you know the fluffing I've been given the superpower, it does have its limitations. Boy, do they suck, but honestly, they might be worth it. Let's start things off with the users of teleportation are actually susceptible to telefrag. Now, telefrag basically means like, you know, I teleport somewhere, I might end up in a wall if, you know, my teleportation is on the fritz. Or teleporting an object, I might end up killing somebody or killing myself. Let's say I'm carrying a pencil or something like that, and I teleport, dematerialize, whatever you want to say. Next thing you know, the pen or pencil is sticking out of my chest. Next up, we gotta talk about the fact that momentum is still preserved in teleportation. So think of it like this. If I were to jump from a building, like not even a tall building, let's say I jump from like a three-story building and I'm teleporting my way down, your momentum is still conserved. So you will still like feel the damage of impact from teleportation. You're only delaying the inevitable because the momentum being conserved, you're still gonna hit the ground incredibly hard. Doesn't really matter that you're teleporting slowly and trying to like take care of things or teleport somewhere else because you're still gonna hit whatever you're landing on pretty dang hard or at least three stories worth. Next up, we gotta talk about the fact that teleportation may take time. You might have to concentrate, you might have to have line of sight, you might have to know exactly where you're going. You think about characters like Goku, he has to lock onto a key signature before he teleports to some location. He can't just teleport like anywhere without like feeling out the key. It's easy to do it on a plane like Earth because there's key signatures all over the place or he has friends who have high key signatures, but it still takes time. And that's one of the major drawbacks, especially when it comes to like defending yourself from certain adversaries or getting out of certain hairy situations. Like if you are panicked, you know how it is, how hard it is to do a simple task, even with like mastery of that task, if you're being forced or being pressed to do it, it's still gonna take a significant amount of time, and energy, and focus to get to where you wanna go. The last thing you wanna do is go about this haphazardly because if you teleport without concentration or like a clear image in your mind of where you're going, you do end up getting caught in things like telefrag or 
slam into like a wall going like Mach 1 or open up into a volcano. Last thing we want to talk about real quick on limitations is the fact that the use of teleportation, depending on where you're teleporting, if that space is already occupied, you can actually bounce out of it. So think of it like this. I'm in this room now. Let's say my editor Becca teleports in here. If she were to teleport in here, but I'm occupying it, let's say it's a small area, she wants to like think, oh, I'm going to teleport this chair. She's not going to teleport directly to this chair. She might be bounced away from me or might cause a, somewhat of like a, a bounce back or a tag of some sort where she might come in here, but it might smash into me. She's not going to be like, oh, teleport I say to my lap like that. It's not how it works. So you, you have to really think about that when you're teleporting because if I'm going to teleport anywhere, I have to know exactly what's that, what's in that area or have some kind of idea of like what's in the area, what's in the room. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into some of the known uses of teleportation because there is a lot of characters with this power, a lot of characters with this power. And if I were to name all of them, we'd be here for days. But we're just gonna dive with a few. I say a few, but it's still a long list. Starting things off, got one of my favorite X-Men, Nightcrawler, of course, the GOAT of teleportation, at least in my book, me. Can we not say that scene from X2 was not the dopest teleportation scene? Whatever, sorry. Nightcrawler, you got a character like Huey Campbell from The Boys. I don't really know much about The Boys. I know the character, I've seen, I know the scene, but you also have angels, demons, and, and witches in most medias. Like, you know, Buffy, which with Willow, she can do it. You have white lighters or angels from the Charm universe. You have Thanos via the Space Stone. You have characters like David Rice from Jumper. Y'all remember Jumper? Like, honestly, does anybody remember that movie? I remember it, but like, uh, it wasn't a great movie. Everybody says the books are better, but I don't know. The movie was fun. I liked it. I liked goofy, white-haired Samuel L. Jackson being a, a hunter or whatever. That was cool with me. You also have characters like Apocalypse from the X-Men universe. You have F uh, Femto or Griffith from Berserk. Could he do that? Somebody let me know in the comment section below because I don't remember him having the ability to teleport. I know with the God Hand, they can kind of like, yeah, you know what? No spoilers from Berserk, but yeah, sorry. But Griffith from Berserk, you have Spawn. You have the Anodites, I hope I said that right, from Big Ten. You have characters like Yoko from Demon Slayer and Nakami from Demon Slayer. You also have characters that use the Kai Kai technique from Dragon Ball. That's normally just the Kais. You have characters that use instant transmission like, you know, Boo or Kid Boo, Goku, Cooler. I want to say Vegeta. That might be a manga spoiler, but kind of Vegeta. Gogeta, Vegito. Characters that use that power. That's all it is. From the My Hero universe, you have Kuro Giri via his warp gates. From One Punch Man, you have a character like Blast. If you know, you know. But yeah, there's just a lot more characters than that. I'm sorry if I didn't mention all the characters. I know there's a bunch of different animes and a bunch of different cartoons and movies that have several characters with these powers. But those are just some of the like more famous ones that I've experienced or I've watched use their utilize this power. Toto from uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Why did I not? Why did I forget Toto? He's like my favorite character on that show. I'm sorry, Toto. I'm I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. That brings us to the section on best and worst users. So. I'm gonna change things around and I wanna actually go through who I believe are the best and worst users. Now, when I say worst, I don't mean it as a disrespect or saying this character is garbage or trash or not worth your time. I'm not saying that, it's not a personal attack. I always say this, but I mean, nobody's gotten on my case just yet. These are just my personal opinions and I don't mean to disrespect by them, but just hear me out. For my worst user, I'm gonna say it's Huey Campbell. Uh, I did watch a couple episodes of The Boys, uh, or maybe a season or two, and I watched him get his power, utilize his power, or his version of teleportation. And the fact that, spoilers, he ends up naked each time, I don't know if I want that. I mean, I don't want to like teleport and my clothes are gone. Like, that's so inconvenient. Can you imagine, like, man, I really want to go to this movie. The Flash is out, I really want to go watch it. Oh, I can just teleport to the theater. No one's gonna know. You teleport to the theater, and you're, you're, you're you know, baiting tackles out. Like, that's, that's not good. So I don't actually like to do this a lot, especially when it regards to like best and worst user, because I feel like it's a cop out, but I can't see one character being better than the other one, especially because they have a similar beat with this with teleportation. So I don't really know, but it is what it is. But my gold medalists are Amazo from Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, and Galactus from the Marvel Universe, from Fantastic Four, from 
I mean, any number of like things you can. He's, he's like a big bad, you know. Person. But these two characters are the gold medals. The reason I both consider gold medalists to me is because they both teleported away an entire planet. Like, what, what do you want me to say? I don't really, I mean, that's, that's insane. I, I, I mean, if I had to give out the edge to one of the people, I would probably give it to Amazo because technically he was teleporting a living planet. And I know that sounds weird, but like the planet itself had a consciousness and like it was alive, as well as like an entire group of Green Lanterns on that planet and Guardians who are all powerful in their own right. I mean, I could give it to him, but the lack is in spot, like characters like, you know, Yonder or Doctor Doom or, and I mean, I mean it's similar. So it's, it's kind of hard to say who's better than whom, especially because they both have outrageous powers, but yeah. So my gold medalists are Galactus and Amazo. If you think one deserves it more, please let me know in this comment section below. Or tell me who else you think is better than that. All right, finishing out, we're going to talk about the overall scores for this power. Now I got it broken down into five categories. That includes versatility, creativity, DC or destructive capacity, combat potential, and daily use. These are my categories. If you have your own, you can list them in the comment section or wherever or message me later. But these are one of the categories I really feel that bring the most out of, of the abilities for me personally. But well, I mean, not everybody's the same. Kicking it off, we're gonna start with versatility. Versatility for me is uh, a bit weird. Uh, I mean, you have the ability to teleport. You can do a lot with it and it can help out in a lot of situations. I just don't think I'm creative enough to come up with a great usage of it versus our incredible versatile usage of it. Considering like, you know, I would just use it for bump stuff. Like, like I can't tell you how many times I would just teleport to work or teleport things or deliver something just instantaneously. I, I probably would just use it in the laziest ways possible, especially if I had like, not even like absolute, like master level teleportation, I would I would definitely be a bum, like straight bum. I would not walk anymore. I would be on couches all day. For me, versatility gets a six out of 10. This is mainly because I don't know really how versatile I would be with this ability. Like, mostly it's just me being a bum, being lazy, and just traveling a lot, like free, not, not having to pay like airfare and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, creativity wise, oh man, like I feel like with teleportation, if you had a proficient level of skill with it, you could be like dreadfully, I hate to say, I said dreadfully? <laughs> dreadfully, ooh, ooh somebody with their lips, calm down. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel that you could be very, very creative with this. And for that reason, I'm gonna give it a nine. Yeah, I'll give it a nine out of 10 for creativity, which, Honestly, I might seem high, but I don't know. I feel like you can be pretty creative with teleportation, so. Next up, we got DC or destructive capacity. Now, I mean, teleporting things like an entire building into another like plane or another continent would be just insane. Not to mention teleporting away like nukes to like other countries, not trying to be a killer or anything like that. I'm just saying. With the with the high level of like proficiency in teleportation, you could do some dangerous and deadly stuff. You would be like the ultimate assassin. You could you could totally tear apart a government with teleportation. Let's be honest. If Nightcrawler wanted to be, he could be the ultimate hitman. He would be better than Deadpool. Well, Deadpool has a teleporter. I mean, he's a goofy character. But if Deadpool or Nightcrawler took assassination as their like end all be all, they would probably be the most deadly. At least in my opinion, because I mean. They can go anywhere like that instantaneously and just take out anybody with their skills and agility. Like, yeah. For me, DC and teleportation go hand in hand. That's a 10. Like, yeah, a 10. Let's be really. If you think it's gonna deserve over a 10, please let me know why. Because literally, you can destroy an entire government, destroy an entire like country if you wanted to by teleporting. Next up, we got combat potential. So I usually put this in my, my rankings because I feel like how would I use this in a combat scenario or fighting or doing anything? Just, you know, solve mysteries, being a, a good boy. And you're a teleporter. Yeah, you're gonna be the most like difficult fighter to you know, like, get a beat on. I mean, unless somebody had like telepathy or time stop or something like that. 
I mean, I don't see a lot of characters like matching. Even speedsters will get clowned on with this power. Like teleportation, if I could just boom and flash in front of them, oh snap, and punch you, what are you gonna do? Or teleport something into your body, doesn't matter how fast you're going, you're still gonna get a pin bullet into your into your chest. That's done. You're, it's OV, sorry. But yeah, combat potential and teleportation gets a 10. Last category we're gonna get into is daily use. This is based on how often one would use this power. Would it be one of those powers you use like every like every other like week, or you really wouldn't use a lot because you might be hurting other people, or it'd be one of those powers you use all the time. And I would I couldn't think of one person, not a single person that's like a fan of like fiction or anything like that, that had hasn't said they use teleportation all the time. Honestly, anybody who says they wouldn't use teleportation that much or they wouldn't care if they had it because they wouldn't use it a lot is lying. Because they're no, no. It, just the just the fact that you could get from point A to point B just by thought or just slight action, it's insane. It's great. Everybody loves to travel. It doesn't matter what you have going on in your life. You want to use teleportation. Just just to get downtown. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so it's getting another 10. That brings our score to a 45 out of 50, giving us an A plus of, on the scale, which is really, really good. It would have gotten an S. I just feel like I'm not as versatile with this power, and it's not a knock on the power. It's just me and my, my hangups. So if you feel like it deserves a perfect 50, be my guest. I just feel like there's a lot of caveats to consider. But I'm just one person. Maybe you feel different. Anyway, thank you so very much for clicking on this video and for your patience. And oh, thank you so much for helping me reach 50 subs Yay! or 52 at the time you support it. Which, phenomenal. Thank you so very much for that. It means the world to me. Like, that's really cool. I'm genuinely happy and I appreciate it of you guys liking what I'm putting out there. It does mean a lot to me. It's, it's so greatly appreciated. And that's from the heart, like 100%. And thank you so very much for watching this video to the very end and having me explain teleportation to you. It was a pleasure and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, take care, peace.